I'm going to do some random pulls for Cantonese style. I like to play using Hong Kong old style scoring. It really is the simplest form of scoring, and this is probably the closest to the original way to play the game. It's really the perfect style to learn if you are brand new to Mahjong. Here's a little view of what the scoring entails. So you can see it's a pretty short list. There's a link below if you want to download a PDF version and follow along. Let me show you how these random pulls work. I have my tiles here and a wind of the round indicator. In Cantonese style you play four rounds where every player gets a chance to be the dealer. So the first round is east and then south and then west and then north. So we're going to do four random pulls starting with east. If you happen to draw a pair of the wind of the round and then during the game get a pung, which is a three of a kind, you'll get a, a han for that, which is a scoring element. In a lot of games there's a minimum scoring element, typically two to four han, depending on the skill level of the players at the table. So east is going to be the wind of the round and I'm going to roll the dice to see which seat I'm in because also whatever seat you're in can help improve your score as well. If you get your own seat wind and pung that, you can get a Han for that too. So I'm going to say that this is temporary east or seat one. So I rolled an eight. Eight, if you count from temporary one right here, east, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's north. So for this random pull, I am in the north seat. That's why I have a four up on my dice. So I am going to take 13 random tiles. And we're going to try to figure out what to play. Let's just say that we need to have two Han in order to win. So when you look at your drawn hand, you got to come up with a plan to get those two Han before you could even qualify to win. So here we have some dots. We've got some winds. That's a north and a south. Here we have bams and some cracks. So if I'm seated in the north seat, if I get a pair of the north, I could pung that, meaning a three of a kind, and I can get a han for that. I do have two pair here, so what I'm thinking is a half flush with pones and pungs and chows. I would need to draw dots for sure and some more honors which are winds and dragons and these are going to have to go away. So I have six discards. If, if I don't draw well I probably wouldn't win this hand. Six is a long way to go. I like to start off with four discards after my decision and that is typically going to be a pretty good chance of a win. So in this case this would be a little bit rough. If I happen to get pairs during the drawing phase of the game I could pung which is typically quicker um, because you can take a discard to complete your pung from any player. So that's a good way to play a fast game. So that's what I would do here. Half flush, hopefully get the seat wind. Okay so let's do another one. This time we're gonna do south round and I'm gonna roll the dice and I'm gonna be again at temporary one so I rolled a seven. Seven if you count uh, east is one then south is two so one two three four five six seven so that's west. West is my seat win this time. So south round I'm in the west seat win.
This is a great style for kids, by the way, even as young as, I don't know, I'd say at least first grade. Um, and then if you have an American set or a westernized set with numbers and letters, that'd probably be easier too, because if you have an Asian set like this where there are no numbers on it, it might be a little hard for them to remember the cracks. The dots and bams are pretty easy, but the cracks, you gotta memorize. But since this style uses four sets and a pair of anything, it's a pretty simple style to learn. You could probably, as an adult, learn it in 15 minutes. Maybe a little longer as a kid. Not much though. So if you pull four from each side and have five in the middle, you have enough tiles. So again, we're west seat and it's south round. Looks like we have a lot of bams. We could do a half flush. So I'm gonna pull off the off suit or the smaller suits. We've got four discards before we would clear to a half flush. I would hold on to this pair for as long as possible because we could potentially do all pung, which is all three of a kind. But knowing me, I like to go for big hands. A half flush is three Han. And we have the west wind Plus we have the south wind. This is my seat wind and this is the wind of the round. So if I pair those up and pung them, those would be one Han each. Even if I don't, I could still go for a half flesh potentially. I have here a potential pung because I have a pair that could turn into a pung. If someone throws the five bam, I could say pung, expose it and get my set right there. Then I have a potential chow, and here's another potential chow. So there's already three potential sets, and you only need four sets and a pair to win. So I have a pretty good chance, I think, of winning this hand if we were in an actual game. Okay, we're going to go on to West Round. We'll see what seat wind we're in. I rolled a five. Five is east, so just to show you how that works, I'm at one, temporarily, two, three, four, five. Five is east, so this time we're the dealer. We are at seat one. four, five in the middle. Oh my goodness, look how pretty that is. Got lots of cracks. Oh, not as many as I thought though. There's five or six off suit, but we have this red dragon. That's always nice. I think the reason why it might, maybe it looks so nice is because there's a pung right there, three of a kind already. So here, this is gonna be actually hard because we have six discards and this is the only multiple, meaning Pung, Pair, all these others are singles. And not only are they singles, but they're kind of standalone. Like between the one and the six, there's a huge gap. Now what we could do is we could break up this pung and make it into chows. 
So if I make take part of that pung and hold it over here for a potential chow, that might work. Also, I could do the same thing here and make another set or a chow by splitting up that seven and using it with the six. So now I have two potential sets as opposed to one complete set. So I think that's what I would probably do. And the challenge with that is if I don't draw that seven, this may end up having to be discarded because there's only four of everything. So timing is important here with the decision making. So I think I would go for a half flush. If I were to draw that red dragon, that would be really nice too because a pung of dragons, a three of a kind of dragons, that's worth a Han all by itself. So a half flush is three Han plus hopefully a pung of dragons, that would be another Han. So if I were to make that work, that would have been a five Han hand. And these would have to all be discarded. Now I could potentially do all chow if I did all chow, that's only one Han. But let me just show you real quick here. So here's a potential chow, here's a potential chow, here's a potential chow, and here's a potential chow. So we would have one, two, three, four chows, and any of these could be paired. The problem with that is though, that's only one Han. If we're playing a two Han minimum, I would not be able to win with that, with that particular hand. I would need to have some other Han elsewhere, whether it be a Pung of Red Dragon, my own flower with my seat wind on it. Um, so yeah, you have to find another Han in order to make a Chow hand work. The Chow hand is the lowest scoring hand you can get, especially if you're mixing suits. The minute you mix Chows and suits, you're going to drive your score down by three right away. All right, let's move on to North Round. I rolled a four, so we are North. So it is North Round and we're North. So if we get a pun in North, we'll get two Han for that. Oh no, I needed that. Okay, four from each side, five in the middle. So let's get them in order here. We have a few wins. We do have lots of dots actually. Well, really more dots than anything, but we have four cracks. Okay, so we're seated at north, north round, north seat, so I'm going to hold on to that north. Hopefully I'll get a pair so that if someone throws a north I could pung it. That would be my first thought. And then because we have so many dots, I would go for a half flush. We have four discards, which is actually pretty nice. Um, we could chow these, pung those, and chow this. So there's three sets already. All we need is a pair in here, and we would be ready to pung and then get our pair for our winning tile. So this, this is actually a pretty good start on hand. Four discards from the onset, that's a pretty decent chance of winning. And then it's just a matter of making choices as far as what combinations you're going to pick for your scoring elements. In this case, a half flush would be three Fawn or Han, 
and then if I were to pair up that north, that would be an additional Han. We know what you think about Cantonese style with Hong Kong scoring. It really is quite simple. Four sets and a pair of anything. Your sets can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. There are a couple of exceptions to that rule. And if you're, you want to look into it deeper, click the links below in the video description. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Between now and the next Cantonese style with Hong Kong scoring random pull, may all your picks be keepers.